Welcome back to the DIY Maker channel. Today we're going to take a look at a cable uh, from a company that goes by the name of DS18. Um, this cable they supplied to me for a project here on my truck. I want to uh, upgrade the wiring to my 175 amp uh, Anderson connector on the front of my truck. I use this connector for jumper cables and also running inverters and things like that when I'm camping or out and about. And uh, I need a cup of coffee, you know how that is. So this cable is absolutely beautiful. It has really high flexibility, and that is due both to the copper. This is oxygen-free copper, which is more limp than, uh, than even regular copper, and way, way, way better than um, what they call CCA or copper-clad aluminum, which is absolutely a terrible solution. This pure copper conductor is going to get you more carrying capacity current wise with a smaller cable. So if you go with the copper clad aluminum, you're going to have to go with a much bigger cable. And that has serious disadvantages. The disadvantages to that are that the aluminum is more uh, susceptible to fatigue and failure over time. So in a high vibration environment like a vehicle, it is not a good solution. And also, you're going to have to go up quite a bit in gauge to get the same current capability that you'll get with pure copper. So why not just start with pure copper? It makes more sense. It makes for a better install, um, definitely tighter. And you're going to get a nice high flex cable like this one. The insulation on this is a PVC polyurethane blend, which was interesting because I wasn't familiar with this type of insulation before. I like the silicone, so, you know, that's, the, that's the high end, but this actually is a great cost-effective solution that is very much close to the performance of silicone. It does give you the best of both the characteristics of the PVC and the polyurethane. So this is going to give you the chemical resistance of the polyurethane and the lower cost of the PVC. And also, it's going to equalize the temperature range and make it a little better for use inside of an engine bay. So I am really stoked with this cable. I can't wait to get this installation underway on my truck. And it is going to be an upcoming episode here on the DIY Maker channel. So do tune in and do subscribe. And uh, tell me in the comments below what you like for heavy gauge cable. Um, this one is a one aught cable. For those that don't know, uh, the American wire gauge system, the way that runs, it starts out with really high numbers for really small diameter wires. And then as you get lower in number, the diameter of the cable gets bigger until you get to zero. And then you go one aught, two aught, and those increase in diameter. So kind of confusing, but um, definitely do make sure you check before you spec a cable for your load, make sure that you check the load rating for that cable and make sure you're checking it for the right metal. If you're using copper clad aluminum, you have a very different chart to follow than you do with a pure copper or an oxygen free copper. Um, these carry way more current than their, their clad aluminum brothers and they are much more serviceable cables and can tolerate a lot more abuse than the, uh, than the aluminum. The other thing the aluminum does, because it has a higher coefficient of thermal expansion, as that cable cycles hot and cold, hot and cold, it's actually working the connection loose on the wire end, and that's not what you want. You want, you want to crimp these and be done with it. Um, and the aluminum can work itself loose, especially on screwed terminals. So. I really like the oxygen-free copper in this situation, and it offers a really solid solution. And I got to thank uh, DS18 for supplying this to me to check out because it is pretty killer. I'm really stoked to get this in the truck, and I'm hoping to have enough of this left over to actually make another extension cable for my truck uh, attachment here and, um, and make this a really solid solution going forward.